All right, so now we're going to go over WordPress posts. WordPress posts are really what the entire platform has been built around. Posts are what are used for WordPress blogs all over the internet and what helped WordPress grow in popularity from the start. I have always compared the post area to being similar to something like Microsoft Word because it is similar to like a word processing application in a way. Now that has changed a little bit because they have gone to Gutenberg block editor now, so it's not quite as much like Microsoft Word as it once was, but I'll show you that here as we progress through this lecture and let's dive into that now to see what makes this WordPress area unique. So here we are over in the admin area for WPFundamentals.com and we see that we have these three posts right now. If we go over here and refresh, I don't actually know where they're going to show up. I think it's right here, product news, feature athlete and summer wrap up. So if we just click on one, we can see that this is what it looks like right now. And we have some nice social sharing plugin here. And it has product news and it just has this basic dummy text here with a comment section at the bottom. So if you wanted to, you could start a clean post or we can edit this one. So before we dive into setting up a post with this new process, I wanted to show you that if we went over and we went to plugins, add new, I'm just gonna open that in a new tab we can see that here is the classic editor and you can install that if you'd like to install a plugin that will give you the old editor that used to be more like something like Microsoft Word and it's probably in my opinion a little bit more user friendly I think there's a little bit more learning curve to Gutenberg and I'm going to get into how to use Gutenberg now but if it doesn't work for you what I'm going through in this video this classic editor plugin is available and it's obviously very highly rated with over 5 million active installs so I'm going to X out of this and go back over here to the post page here and let's just start a new post. So if we click add new, we can dive in. And now it loads the screen where we're going to be able to start creating our posts. Now the only reason why this area here, this Yoast SEO is because I have the plugin installed for Yoast and that's not normally going to be there unless you have the plugin installed itself or this edit with Elementor itself would not be there without having the Elementor plugin installed. So here we're going to be able to add our title. Let's just call this one first blog post. And then you can actually go over here. You see it says disable content title. That will come into play with certain themes where you might have to disable it or else it will show it twice. So we're going to have to look how this theme actually works here and see if we need to disable that content title or not. So this says start writing or type slash to choose a block that's forward slash right here. So you can just start writing, this is my first blog post, and then I'll hit enter. And then let's just hit this forward slash, and it gives us a whole bunch of drop downs that we can add different things in here. So let's say you wanted to add an image. You can do that. Let's go with image right here at the top. And then I'll go to Media Library where we already have an image and I'll just add this one to it. I'll hit select and now we have this image added to the actual post that we're creating here. Now over here on the right side you can add image alt text and that helps you for SEO which is search engine optimization. So let's just say you wanted to add this and just call it garden or something. You would want to add garden as the alt text over here. And then you also have the option to change the size of the image. You can make it medium, you can make a thumbnail, you can make a full size, and you can change the width and height over here for the dimensions as well. That can affect how fast or slow your website loads because of the size of the images. If we scroll down here, we can go and click this plus to add a block. There's actually multiple ways to add these blocks. So if you hit enter, you can add it, you can click there, you can click this plus, and you're gonna see a whole different list of blocks that you can add. This whole builder is based on blocks. So if we look here, there's paragraph, image, audio, heading text, gallery, list, quote, cover, file, and then that's just some of them. There's also other common blocks here. The only other one that wasn't there, I guess, was video. If we go down here, there's formatting. You can format it in different ways. There's layout elements. If you want to add columns, a button, have a page break, a separation between or a spacer between, those can come in handy. There's widgets as well. You can add different widgets to the site itself here to your page. There's embeds. Say you want to embed a YouTube video. That's how you could do it right there. 
You can embed Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud. There's a lot of different options. So let's just close that as well. This would only come into play when you have the Yoast plugin installed. And this is if you have WooCommerce on your site as well. You can add different things. So when you add certain plugins, you're going to have different functionality that can be implemented through those plugins into Gutenberg here. So let's just say we want to start writing some more text here. And I'll hit enter. Now, if you want to, you can actually see on the left side, you can rearrange the order. So let's say I want this to go up here. I can hit this move up or you can actually click and drag it. So let's say I want to do that. I'll just move it up, move it up again. And now it's at the top here. The only thing above it is the actual post name. So I'm going to move it down, move it down. If you see over here, we have these three buttons on the right. Let's say you wanted to delete it. You can click on these three buttons and click remove block. And you also have different options like to undo that. So let's say you weren't happy and you want it back. You can click undo right here or redo right here. So another thing you can do, click on these three buttons as well. And you can also duplicate it or hide the block settings. There's so many options here. You can duplicating it. You're just going to make more of them. And if we want to click on it again, we can choose insert before. You can choose insert after. There's a lot of different options that you can do to move these texts around or move the blocks around. I'm going to actually click on it and I'm going to then remove the block and I'm going to delete this block as well. So I just remove block. And now I have just this with this is a garden here in this sentence. Something else you can do is you can actually click on these three options here and you can go down to where it says add reusable blocks and here you can name your reusable block. So let's say you want to have this block in multiple places. You can do that by adding this in here. I'm just going to choose reusable block as the name and I'll save it. And now if I want to, I can reuse this block over and over again. So let's say I go down here. I want a plus and go down to reusable block. And then there it is. This is a garden. So there's a lot that you can do and a lot of easy features and things that you can manipulate in here. Now, if you want to publish the post, let's say you wanted to just publish it and get it live on your site. I know it's pretty bland right now and there's barely anything on it. You can go up to where it says publish. And then you can actually choose when you want it to be scheduled. So if you click on here, you won't publish it immediately. You can choose when to schedule this further in advance or even do it the next year, a week from now, two weeks from now. So this is what a lot of bloggers do and content organizers do. They plan things in advance. They might write like five blog posts in a week, but they'll schedule them out one a week for the next five weeks. So that way you have five weeks of content already written on your website in advance. I know I do this with my other websites where I have blogs that I'm updating every week or so where I'm putting one or two articles every week. This is what I do. I write articles in advance or I outsource some of the writing in advance and then I schedule them out right in this area here and I choose the date and time. So I'm always launching at the same time on the same day each week and developing this schedule. You can also add tags to your post down here and that can help you with search engine optimization as well. So let's say this is about a garden. I might want the tag garden to be in the post. So you simply just type it in and then you hit enter. And once you're ready, you can hit publish. And it says first blog post is now live. You can click view post and we can see it on the site itself. It looks very boring and plain but you can see where it says first blog post right up here. That's the title. Then I wrote this is my first blog post. You see this is a garden, this is a garden. And then we have the comments section down here below. If we go back, we're going to see the same exact layout over here that we just saw on the post. So it says first blog post. This is my first blog post, the image, garden, garden. And there you go. So it's really easy to edit this if you want to change the permalink so this would be with SEO it says first blog post so you would know that this is going to be wpfundamentals.com slash first hyphen blog hyphen post and that is what it looks like so if we open it in a new tab you can see that's what it says right up here and that's where your permalink structure comes into play 
we changed those settings to be this as the default, which was a great change. If you want things to be a little bit more organized, over here you have categories. You can add a new category and this can also help for optimization and basically improve the user experience because they can find things and search for things by different categories. So if you're covering WordPress, blogging, YouTube, marketing, all these different topics, you can break them down into different categories over here. And then you can also go to featured image and you can set a featured image and that will be the image that someone sees before they actually click on the post itself. So you can see these images right here on these two. This is the first blog post. It does not have one. So let's go down here and I'll go to set featured image and I'm just going to choose the same garden image. You can use the alt text here to improve it as well for the SEO. I'll just hit select and now we have that in there. I'll hit update for featured image. And now when we go over here and we refresh, we have no image there now. Let's refresh and see and now we have this first blog post image. It should be the same size as these other two images, so that's something you want to look at when you're creating these featured images. Down here is an excerpt, and that's going to be, basically it's going to show you part of what the post is about. You can learn more about them here. Discussion, it, you can choose if you want to allow comments and allow pingbacks and textbacks over there. So that's where this section comes into play down here. And then we also have post attributes. You can use different templates if you want. This comes into play with our plugin Elementor. I'm just going to leave it as is. You can use different sections, layout, and you can disable certain elements or enable different elements within the sidebar widgets there. So I'm just going to hit update one last time. And we can see right here our post should look the same. There it is, first blog post. We click on it. And this is what it looks like. So that's just a basic way to set up a generic blog post or just run through some of the options. There's so much you can do in Gutenberg and it really takes some time just playing around with it to get used to it. So I highly suggest you take some time, get used to what all the blocks can do here and just play around with them and see how it looks. Set up some test posts and you can always preview it and then delete it later, move it to trash later. You can also go into here where it says post and then you can go to trash right here. Once I do that, I'm going to go into trash again, delete permanently, and then I'll go back to all. There's only those three now. If we refresh the home page, it's no longer going to have our post there. It's going to have the three that were originally there. So that's just how you run through post real quick. Again, I would play with it and get used to it yourself. It took me quite a while to get used to it going from the classic editor, which I actually stuck with for a while before moving over to Gutenberg and getting more comfortable with it. So I highly recommend you just take some time and get used to it and you'll get the hang of it eventually. So I hope this video was helpful to get you started and kind of get you to have a feel for how to use posts. In the next video I'm going to go over comments and how to change the comment settings here within WordPress in the dashboard. So let's dive into that next.